If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of what your hard money lender would say or your banker, you're at the right place. Don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding for your deals. Well, welcome to the show. My name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And welcome to the show. We're almost right here at a year of uh, launching Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. We're having thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads and listeners every week. And if this is your first time to the show, just a quick overview. We talk all things uh, related to real estate investing. Uh, we talk primarily about single family houses, but we also talk about uh, commercial deals as well. And so again, if you're new to the show, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we've been investing here in Eastern North Carolina for 15 years, primarily in single family houses. We've done commercial projects as well. And about 10 years ago, I got cut off from the banks with no notice over an 800 credit score. But if you may recall what was going on back in 2008 and 2009, where most of the funding was cut off across the globe. And I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money. And I haven't missed out on a deal since the last 10 years because I didn't have the funding. And so as I promised just a second ago, I'm going to plug you into the funding because I have got a free on demand online class ready for you to watch right after the show. Just get on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. And I'll take you through the five steps on how you can get the funding. Well, since I launched the show about a year ago, I have had some phenomenal guests here on the show. And today is absolutely no different. I'm so excited to have my special guest and my friend on here today. Let me introduce him to you first, and then I'll bring him on. My good friend and colleague, his name is Gary Boomershine. And Gary founded realestateinvestor.com way back in 2005. And the reason Gary founded realestateinvestor.com back then was actually was to grow his own real estate investing business. And so he's had a long successful career in technology markets. And it wasn't long before Gary had the vision for realestateinvestor.com. And so he used the initial product and service himself to, to actually explode his business. He saw his business flourishing. And it wasn't long that uh, he saw that he was making a lot of money by using the service that he created by, you know, talking to a lot of sellers and making offers. And so realestateinvestor.com uh, launched its flagship product under the leadership of Gary and they, he launched what's called REI Vault. And uh, he'll talk about this in a few minutes. But anyway, I want to quote for you and give you a quote that Gary says. And here's what Gary says. Most small real estate enterprises limit their growth and many times fail. And here's why they do. Instead of being able to focus on closing deals and maximizing profits, they hit a wall trying to build and do everything themselves. And so, you know, you all heard me talk about how important it is to automate your business. Well, my friend Gary Boomershine has really taken this to the top level of automating your business and what he's able to bring to not only his own business, but to his clients as well is finding these really, really hot motivated sellers that does not rely on the MLS. These are actually pre-screen motivated sellers. Well, anyway, Gary, he uh, now lives in uh, Northern California with his wife and two daughters, and he man manages this global team uh, for realestateinvestor.com. So my good friend, my colleague, wow, my expert when it comes to real estate investing, Gary Boomershine. Gary, welcome to the show. Jay, it's a pleasure and really appreciate the opportunity. I know you and I have been speak talking about doing this on both podcasts. I, I have a realestateinvestor.com huddle, a, another podcast. And I know that I'm bringing you on because we, we go way back, Jay, a long, you, you know, <clears throat> there's actually a term and I, I think you heard it when we were in Tampa last year, there were about 80 of us, a hundred of us around the country. And uh, you and I are called OG, which is uh, the original gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that's basically been around since uh, pre 2008, I got into real estate full time 2004. 
And gosh, what a great business. You're right. I had the same problem in 2008 when the credit dried up. And I love what you teach, Jay. And uh, you're, you're, you know, raising money is so important. In fact, there's three things. And I'm going to get right into the content today and hopefully deliver a lot of value to all of your loyal people and followers. But the money in real estate is number one, closing deals, talking to sellers and making offers and closing deals. Number two is always be raising money. Always raise money. And by the way, raise the money when you don't need the money. And by the way, the, you also don't even have to ask for the money if you do it right. I know you teach that as well. And then the third thing is, is focus on leverage by building your team. So a lot of people focus on money, but they forget this is a leverage of other people's time, other people's resources, and other people's experience. You really don't have to. There's nothing new under the sun in real estate. It's like find something that works, right? Find the right guy or the right group that actually is really making money today and then replicate what they do. And uh, that's what I love about you, Jay, because you're the real deal. And, and so, uh, yeah, this, this is a great, I'm super excited about this, this topic today. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad to have you on the show, Gary. So give uh, my audience your backstory. In other words, what led you to where you are and why are you qualified to talk about what you talk about? Yeah, so I'll make it kind of quick. I grew up, believe it or not, I've been in real estate from almost day one. My parents owned a, a residential real estate brokerage, and we had a bunch of rental properties. So they were buying subject to and creative deals way back in the 70s. I actually just turned 50. And in 1987, really more by force, right? Almost by gunpoint. We were, all of us kids, I was youngest of four, we were forced to get our real estate license and get into the business. And so two weeks after turning 18, I was a licensed agent. I was door knocking. I was cold calling. That's how I paid for college. And I, I absolutely had no interest. In fact, I told my dad that I didn't want any part of the business. And I got a computer engineering degree, went to UC Davis, and uh, decided to go down the technology path. And I got recruited by one of the top technology and management consulting firms in the world. It's called Accenture hundreds of thousands of people. They're actually as big as IBM. They, they, all the Fortune 500 companies use them. So they were originally called Anderson Consulting, Arthur Anderson. But I got recruited. I was two, two out of 25,000 people at, at UC Davis got recruited there. It was awesome, man. I worked like a hundred hour a week. You know, <laughs> I got to travel all over the world and I never actually saw sunshine. It was always inside buildings. And I did that for five and a half years. And then I'm like, you know what? I can't be swapping hours for money. That's consulting, right? And not making the bigger part of it. And so I decided to go into sales, technology sales. And so I did four technology startups, one that super went, would cover a Fortune magazine, went public. I was employee number seven. And I did four of those startups, but it was the same thing. It was, I was never home. I was always on a plane. I think my first year, in sales, I was on United Airlines, 180,000 miles. And after, after the whole dot-com thing and like totally stressed out, a lot heavier than I am, probably like 60 pounds heavier than I am today. I'm like, you know, my wife and I are like, this is no life. We have two daughters. And so 2004, Jay, I burned the ships like Napoleon. I cannot believe I did this. So imagine I had a two-month-old daughter. I had a four-year-old daughter. My wife had quit her brand management job. So she wasn't working. We had a $700,000 mortgage because it's California. And I went cold turkey. And we said, we're doing real estate. And by the way, the first deal uh, we closed, we made $181,000. Nice. It was absolutely, talk about a, a, a blessing. It's a long story. But that was in 2004. And what I found is that I was really, I love talking to sellers. The money is actually in talking to sellers and yeah. being in front of sellers, right? And, and it's a numbers game. This is, and that's a nugget for everybody. This is a numbers game. And, it's, and, and so I'll share some philosophies. But what I found is get me in front of the sellers and, and I'll close them. But there were so many moving parts, right? Direct mail, cold calling, this postcard, that postcard, pulling mailing list, licking stamps. And so anyway, I, I actually found a group of people that used to work with me overseas. And I had them build an engine. And that engine we still use today. And I'll, I'll give everybody, we're the largest marketer in the, actually in probably in the world, but I know in our niche, we've done over 34 million pieces of direct mail. 
my team has actually done over a million outbound seller calls. We do it for a, a, a small group of people, about 250 people around the country. I have a service because a lot of people are saying, gosh, Gary, could you, you know, you do it for yourself. Could you, you do this for us? And so I built a service that is called REI Vault. It's, it's really not for brand new investors. It's really for people that, that have, have a business. Maybe they're super experienced. Maybe they're, you know, a little experienced, but they're looking to scale. And so we basically become your marketing and your inside sales team. We're not a vendor. We become part of your team. And it's like tapping into the equivalent of a 40 person marketing and inside sales team for the cost of one VA. So for about 10 bucks an hour, you can have our team manage all of your marketing, guarantee the lowest cost on the direct mail, manage the whole thing, and then a trained phone team that is actually calling, screening, qualifying, and scheduling appointments for you on your behalf all day long, and all that for the one cost of 10 bucks. And uh, that idea actually came from Sean Terry, by the way. Oh, really? I, I, it was. We were, we were all part of, you were a CG guy, right? Oh, yeah. Still so, am. Yeah. So, and that's another thing, getting involved in masterminds, getting involved in having a one-on-one -on -one CEO coach, like coaching through you. Those are life-changing opportunities. There's so many different booby traps in this business, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, I, always, I always say there's like seven or eight doors and, and two of them le lead to massive wealth and six of them could be time wasters, right? And possibly even business destroyers. And so CG, uh, that's, for those of you that don't know, that's a mastermind, high-end, all seven and eight-figure guys. And, you know, kind of coming up with part of this model came out of that group. And yeah, it was Sean Terry and Kent Clothier that gave me some recommendations that have uh, really changed our business. So yeah, yeah, we're doing about a million pieces of direct mail. I've got a team of a little under 80 people all over the world. And, and we're doing it for about maybe 250 real estate agents and investors, basically managing their marketing and their phone team. Yeah. Well, you mentioned a moment ago an astounding number. You said you've, uh, to date, your company has mailed out over 34 million pieces of direct mail. You've made how many outbound calls did you say your team's made? Yeah, we're over a million. I actually, it was, about 18 months ago that one of the holes, what I found, and, and here's another nugget for everybody, to make, so w when I talk about direct mail, this market right now, for those that are really doing well, it's an off market market, meaning these are, you gotta go direct to the seller, right? They're not deals on the MLS, they're not HUD properties or bank owned REOs or foreclosures. Like that market was like 2009 to 2013. This is a direct to the seller. What we're doing is off market. Well, here's what's working best. So direct mail, cold calling, and RVM. So RVM is ringless voicemail. And in fact, we're about ready to offer that service as well. But sending out direct mail, cold calling, right? So skip tracing a list, and there's secrets to that whole process. And then cold calling with the right team with the right script. And then RBM is the ringless voicemail where instead of like dialing for dollars and calling, you're actually doing, you know, thousands of, you know, leaving them voicemails direct to their cell phones. 60% of all the phone numbers, by the way, that we're finding are, uh, are cell phones, uh, very different than five or six years ago. So that means like 60% of all the calls are cell phones, which means text messaging is fantastic, right? So we can, so we can do that. The trick, the technique, to make it all work is you've got to have an inside dedicated phone team that's talking to the sellers because that's almost an impossible job. Like we, right. Are we a, we're a real estate investor or business owner and trying to do four or five or $6 an hour work, right? If you're doing four or five or $6 an hour work in this business or $10 an hour work, you're going to make $10 bank account right? Your bank account is going to show exactly the type of effort. So as a real estate entrepreneur, really value our time and be focused on like, what is our value of our time? And, you know, as an entrepreneur wanting to make a lot of money, it's typically 250 to a thousand dollars an hour. So anything that you're doing less than that is a waste of time. It doesn't mean it doesn't need to get done. It just means it really shouldn't be you. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, that's a lot of leads. And when I say the word leads, I think of a quote, I think of a concept that I've heard you say in the past, and I want you to take a few minutes and talk about it. I've heard you say, Gary, quote unquote, all leads suck. Tell my audience what in the world you mean when you say all leads suck. Yeah, all leads suck. Oh my gosh, this is, this is a mindset. The, guy, the people out there that are doing this and making a, a ton of money off of direct mail and cold calling, they have the philosophy that all leads suck. And the reason is, is that you have to talk to the seller multiple times. And most of the time, they're going to appear that they are not motivated. So we, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they expect the seller to call like, hey, rush over to my house and buy it for 50 cents on the dollar. And the reality is that's called a bluebird. Okay, it doesn't happen very often. So if you train yourself or train your sales team, ultimately you should do that uh, and have a team, somebody do the, uh, the, the, the sales part of it for you, is that all the leads suck. They need to, they take time and, and follow up, right? The whole, here's a national statistic. And this, by the way, is not just real estate. Only 3% of the leads, of the inbound seller leads, 3% close within the first month. 97% are going to close after that first month. Yet, and 80% and of the profits come between the fifth and the 12th interaction with the seller. Yet 90% of real estate investors never follow up more than twice. And so most people, they get three feet from gold. They're so close. They've got the leads. And then all of a sudden, oh, direct mail doesn't suck or direct mail sucks or it's not working or nobody's motivated. And so most investors are chasing rabbits. They're going and trying to get the little fairy dust postcard, the new uh, postcard or the new list. And they're chasing rabbits when they were so close, right? Here's the statistic. And I'm a numbers guy because it's just like every business, it is a numbers game. So one in 45 leads should produce a deal. One in 45 leads, okay? And if you if you got the right follow-up system like REI Vault, it's going to drop probably in half. So one in 20 leads. So here's what happens. You get 45 leads. That means you put out enough postcards or letters or ringless voicemails. You're going to get 45 leads. About one third of those are going to be motivated sellers. What I should say, partially motivated sellers, right? One third. Because the other two thirds are going to be not ready yet. They're going to say they're not interested or remove me from the mail, or they might be angry. So about one third, so 45 turns into about 15. About 15, all of those 15 need to be talked to. In fact, all the 45 need to be talked to. 15, about half of those you should make offers on, then close one in seven, all right? That's if you're not very good, and, and if you've actually got some good skills. So it's really a numbers game. Here's the problem. Somebody has got to do all the, the phone work and that typically is a new investor, the new investors are trying to do that themselves. And that is the fastest way to go broke. It is, it's a hard job. I, I, I always tell, I was told this on stage, I was speaking at a Kent Clothier event a couple weeks ago. And I said, here's the thing, everybody, think of, think of, uh, think of lead generation is like a pit full of rocks. So you got this pit of rocks, and it, the rocks actually need to be chiseled, right? Because there's gold and there's diamonds in those rocks, right? So you've got all the leads sitting in a pit. Somebody has to get down there with the pickaxe and talk to those sellers and ask them the questions, right? Bedrooms and bathrooms and how soon do they want to sell? And is the property vacant or occupied? And what is it rent? Somebody has to do that work and deal with some of the rejection. And so it's a lot of dialing for dollars and using a pickaxe. And that should be done by somebody that's a 5 to $10 an hour resource, not us as an investor. Yeah, and so let me ask you this question, Gary. In your experience, and you and your team have got a ton of experience in, in talking with sellers and partially motivated sellers. Let's say that you can't make a deal today with a particular seller. We just, we just you know, can't come to terms on the dollars. We can't structure it today. So regardless of what they say to you, other than don't ever talk to me again, but assuming they don't say don't ever talk to me again, how often uh, would you have your team follow up with that potential seller? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So we call those 
So there's two. There's actually, we call it a drip, a drip, D-R-I-P, drip campaign, okay? So there's two, there's, there's actually multiple buckets. So the follow-up bucket is, hey, the seller really isn't ready to sell yet, okay? The other bucket might be you've made them an offer and it hasn't closed. Those are two separate paths. The third, as an example, of the people that say they're not interested. All right, let me start with the not interested. Those not interested leads are absolute gold, but it takes 90 to 120 days to do nothing. And then you should tr trick off what we call a drip campaign. The drip campaign is a combination of sending out a text message, waiting a week, sending out a ringless voicemail with a nice voicemail with the right words, and then waiting a few weeks, pushing it over to a phone team to have the phone team call and say, hey, we, we spoke recently about buying your property. Have you thought any more about possibly selling? And doing that forever. Once you get somebody that's called, you really never need to send out a postcard again. You really should send out a follow-up letter. I'm living in a house in California. The lady called to be removed from the mail. Some of, my best, some of my best leads, and by the way, from our members, this is, this is why I say all leads suck, because once you get on the phone, the, the nice lady that we bought this house, by the way, this was a subject to creative deal. I mean, just typical of what you and I know, know how to do, but she wanted to be removed from the mail. And I got on the phone. We had a nice dialogue. I said, gosh, if you ever know of anybody, Ruth, that a, a neighbor a family member, you know, I run a reputable company. I would love to possibly pay for your groceries for a few months or maybe have your yard work done or maybe even donate to your favorite charity. And she said, wow, you know what? That's really nice of you. It turned out that we found out that she goes to the same church as, my, as, as we do in, in, a, in a women's group, a Christian Bible study with my wife. Well, anyway, she called me three months later. I put her on a follow-up letter sequence and we do that for our members. You can click a button it takes them off of postcards and puts them on a really, really good uh, follow-up letter sequence. They get eight of them over eight months. On month three, so she'd received three of these, and on the third month, she called me up and said, hey, are you still interested? I'm ready to sell. And I got wow. over and I picked up that house. One of the best deals, I made over $241,000 in, uh, this is one of the best deals in single family, I should say, was a fireman. His name was Dwight. And he left a voicemail. I sent him a postcard. And I, you know, me personally, I send hundreds of thousands of postcards. And so you, you find all kinds of people, angry, happy, you know, but usually the super angry ones, there's usually a problem. So they're not angry at us. There's usually a problem. It could be a health issue. It could be a family money dispute, especially this, the type of marketing that we're sending out to inherited properties. But anyway, it turned out he, he left voicemails that were so mean. It had every foul language, like literally threats. And so I, I called him up and he said, who is this? I said, this is probably the last guy on the planet that you'd want to talk to. And so we ended up having a dialogue. Well, I bought both houses. He had a, his wife was in jail for embezzlement. Wow. He had a million dollar lien against two houses that were almost free and clear. And at the time, I ended up getting that lien release for 41,000 bucks. I bought the house and made $240,000. So my point is that some of the best leads will appear unmotivated and that they suck. And you have to get on the phone. Now, somebody needs to do that work. And it really shouldn't be us. I will, as a free gift to everybody, <clears throat> we built a phone team. I have over almost 30 people on our phone team do all the follow-up and cold calling for our members if they want it. And I will give you the exact script that our team uses. Uh, that you, nice. That all of, nice. Your, all of your, especially if you're fairly new and you don't know what to say to sellers, the right words to build motivation, ask the right questions, build rapport, and get a yes, then I will give that to you at the very end. It'll be a, a website that I've given to Jay. And there's a couple of other tools in there that you'll get access to. Cool? I love it. Thank you, Gary. Now, Gary, let me ask you this. You know, what was working maybe two years ago, three years ago, may not be working as well today. Of course, you know, one thing you mentioned was not, you know, we can't rely on the MLS like we did years ago. But what would you say are the top one, two, or three strategies that's really hot and working today to locate 
those motivated sellers. Yeah. Yeah. So traffic and conversion. So what's the best traffic? Traffic is, is marketing, right? How do I actually, what, where do I go right now to find the sellers? And then the conversion is how do I convert those sellers? And both are important, absolutely critical together. One does not work without the other. I'm going to start with direct mail. Direct mail is direct mail for most of the people that are making seven figures actively in this business. I'm not talking about passive, you know, real, the true real estate investor who's a long-term buy and hold investor. I'm talking about the business, you know, wholesalers, fix and flip. All the big ones are doing direct mail. The reason is direct mail works. It has a proven ROI, return on investment. Spend a dollar, you're typically going to make four to $25 in return within about 90 days. All right. And so direct mail also scales unlike anything else because you can actually scale in most markets, you know, spend more money, make more money, right? Cold calling is the second. The reason cold calling is working is nobody else is doing it. And so that's the second. The third is ringless voicemail. That means basically loading up a list of names and phone numbers right? The trick is how do you get the right names and phone numbers? I can talk about that too. And then, and then sending those out. Uh, Facebook ads has, uh, I, I know a few people are doing okay on Facebook ads for sellers. The problem is most of the older sellers who are buying properties from are not on Facebook. The buyers are, but Facebook marketing for sellers, you know, I, I'm not doing that, but that is another alternative. There's door knocking but highly, highly time consuming. It's not a scalable model. You know, you, there's, you can buy, if you've got money and you're a true investor, you can actually buy from wholesalers or you can buy from turnkey investors. So you could go to somebody like a Memphis Invest who's, who buys over 5,000 properties and you can actually just tap into, you know, you can give them $100,000 and they'll give you an 8% return on your investment. You don't have to do anything. They, they take care right. of the property management, right? So now if you're doing direct mail, here's, here's the thing. There are really, th there's the mailing list, which is super important. It's the names and addresses. It's the copy. And then it's the phone team. Okay. Those are the three things. So it's gotten more competitive. So a couple of years ago, nobody was doing it. And now everybody's catching on. In fact, every late night TV commercial, you know, info guru is now, selling courses and the postcards that they're recommending, guess where they came from? They came from, uh, from me and Chris Chico. So most of the popular postcards were invented by us and we didn't even really invent them. They actually came from Dan Kennedy from years ago, right? The little yellow postcard, if it says third notice or urgent notice, that came from us. If you see the little pink one, that's what's called the pink doodle that came, actually that was Joe, uh, Joe Taylor, eight figure guy who, then came to us and then we're, we're replicating that. The mailing list, there's really three mailing lists that people, that if you're buying absentee owners from list source, you're really competing with everybody because that used to work. Now all the late night TV commercial guys are telling, you know, Fan Merrill at Fortune Builders uh, tells all of his hundreds and hundreds of thousands of students, hey, just go out and buy this absentee list. So it's saturated. Right now the sellers are receiving. So there's an inherited list. We call it the invisible list. And that, that's something that we pull and actually uniquely are able to provide our members. It's mostly inherited, mostly absentee owners, mostly free and clear. And uh, it's, the reason it's called invisible is that it's usually not on the list source, real quest list. Nice. One reason is some of the best deals don't have a last sale date. So when you pull a mailing list, most people are saying, hey, where the last sale date is, you know, 10 years ago or longer. Well, the real gems don't have a last sale date because they've been owned for 30 years. Right. Like the type of rundown properties we want. And so the second list is uh, uh, Kent Clothier has a system called Smart. And that has a fine motivated sellers now and vacants. That's been fantastic. We actually pull that on behalf of some of our members. And then Chris Richter, as you know, uh, Chris, he sells his list for $30,000 and gives exclusivity by territory, but that's been an incredible list. Now for your listeners, 
that don't necessarily have the capability of getting one of these. I would say SMART, Kent Clothier's SMART system is fantastic. Or you could do, you could go to list source and buy the list. Just don't put in a last sale date. So download all the records and, and actually find the ones that don't have a sale date and mail to those first if you're doing it as a brand new investor. And then make some money, <clears throat> right, doing this, prove it out. And then when you're ready to scale, come talk to REI Vault and let us get you 10 houses or 20 houses a month if that's your if that's what you want. I love it. Now, one thing you mentioned a moment ago, Gary, was there's a, there's a pretty cool way that you can get names and phone numbers for a list. Can you share that with the audience? Yeah. So uh, the historic name is called skip tracing. The new name is called data stacking. So a lot of this, the savvy investors doing this, it's a data stacking because there's a process and we do that for our members as well. We actually pull the, the phone numbers for people. There's typically, you take a list, you take your mailing list of the targeted properties and then you run it through a service. We actually go through three services and then they'll typically provide you anywhere from one to nine phone numbers back, right? And most people, they never get that far. The reason it works is because very few people are doing it. Uh, IDI, so the initials IDI.com is probably one of the best providers. That's one that we use. And then there's a few other guys around the country. TRW, that's actually the credit bureau. In fact, the founders of IDI actually founded that uh, TRW. And then before that, they were at LexisNexis. So the IDI is really the best place to go if you're doing it on your own. Now, if you, you don't want to deal with any of this and you just want the experts, you know, you come to REI Vault and let us do it. We get a massive discount because we're buying high volume. And then we offer that right back to our members. So that's uh, awesome. Gary, I cannot believe that we have already uh, pretty much run out of time and we have barely even, uh, you know, touched the hem of the garment, as they say. So let's go ahead and give out. In fact, for those that are watching uh, the video version of the show, we're going to put right up here. I'm going to ask my uh, executive producer to put right here on the video, this special website we've given that will take people to the free bonuses uh, that you offered. And that's www.jayconner.com forward slash REI vault, jayconner.com forward slash REI vault. So Gary, uh, tell the audience uh, one more time what they're able to go there and, uh, and get and learn. Yeah. Yeah. One is, so first off, I have uh, our proven script. This is actually built by our members of the perfect words to talk to a seller. It's the same script that our, what we call our sales ninjas have been trained on to talk to sellers. So you can use that yourself. If you've got any uh, concern about what to say to sellers, you know what, it's, it's really just a conversation. You do this five to 10 times and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm actually, these sellers want to sell to me. So that, that is a free, a free tool. I have a, a lot of us are, you know, I would say as a, as a, as a business, right. As a business entrepreneur, a real estate entrepreneur, you've got to know your numbers. Every business needs a CEO, a leader, right? And it's very hard to be trying to be doing $5 an hour work. So you want to know your numbers. So I have a tool very popular in our niche called a scorecard, the traction uh, scorecard. So it'll actually help you generate exactly what your marketing budget. So let's say you want to make a, a half a million dollars this year and you're in a market like North Carolina, it will give you exactly what to do. The numbers, the number of sellers you have to talk to, the number of offers you need to write, and it'll basically have the ability of doing it on a monthly basis and then on a weekly basis. And as you build a team to do this, now you can hold them accountable. And, uh, and so, you know, it, in this business, for a lot of you that are fairly new, you know, be real clear. A real estate investor is, is typically a buy and hold long-term investor. They usually have money. So we call ourselves investors. It's really business owners or entrepreneurs. And again, that's a business. So run it like a business, be a CEO and value your time. That's a big one. Gosh, I wish, you know, Jay, I wish I learned that. You know, I come from a world of being a workaholic and trying to do everything myself. And I think, gosh, if I just, you know, the one thing we don't all have is time, right? Money, right. money varies, but value your time because this business could provide a massive amount of freedom 
right? Most of us got in this business for financial freedom and being able to vacation. And so value, value your time, you know, pick the right guys like Jay Connor, be in masterminds, get good coaching and really build something that we all got into this business for in the first place. That's awesome. Gary, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. I look forward to seeing you at one of our mastermind meetings coming up here in the near future. And uh, thank you so much for uh, offering the, uh, the free script and the free uh, gifts to my audience. Again, one more time, folks, that's www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash R-E-I vault. All right, folks, thank you for joining us on the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.